We're trying something new here. Uh, there's a lot of you who have questions about what I'm doing with the training and stuff. So what I have done is created a short webinar for you to explain to you what's going to happen once you get into this training. Now, there, this is a webinar. There'll be a link below in the first comments for you to access the webinar. And then on Sunday, I'm going to do a live Q&A session. And that way you can get the information that you need so you can make an information, make a decision if you want to be part of this or not. So that link is below and everyone that goes to that link is going to get a special discount on the training because I'm still building it out. I'm going to be working on the corporate citizen playbook and I'm going to be working on the YouTube stuff pretty much until the end of July. So there's a lot of stuff that's coming. So what you want to do is go below and get in this stuff right now. I'll see you in this video. What's going on guys today. We're going to talk about how the holding company game is going crazy. So let's talk about how the holding company game is going crazy. I want to show you something. Uh, that's one card. Um, actually, let me show you these two. These two credit cards have a $350,000 credit limit between both of them because they're on the same tier. And each of these cards are at $75,000, right? Let me explain something to you guys. Um, because I'm a technician and let's go ahead and talk about this. I'm not a YouTube reporter. I don't report. I don't go out and research things and look things up and come back and report that to you. There's a value to that, but that's just something that I don't do. I'm a technician. What is a technician? I'm actually turning the tools, working on the car, working on the house. I'm actually working from a technician level. And since I'm working at a technician level, here's, I'm going to be able to get hundred thousand dollar limits on the credit cards and my charge card limit is going to go through the roof. Let me explain to you what I'm doing. Now I had my first holding company, then I had my second holding company. Now I have my third holding company. Let me explain to you what I'm probably going to do uh, the last week of June or maybe the first week of July. I haven't really decided, but I'm going to sell all of my active companies, which were under holding company number two to holding company number three. Now that's just going to be some administrative updates with the secretary of state, nothing really big, but one of the things that, um, I have come to find out is when you're actually playing the game and I'm going to spell out what playing the game means where you're actually playing the game, have businesses, have a holding company, file your taxes, pay yourself, set up more businesses. That's playing the game. Cause let me go ahead and just be a hundred percent clear with this. If you're just trying to play the holding company game by going out, setting up your LLCs and doing this, and you do not have a business that makes money, this, will be impossible for you to do. Just go ahead and put that. You're not going to be able to get um, these larger credit lines. I, I want you to think about this. I want you to really, really think about this. Um, next year, or maybe this year, let me see. June, July, August, possibly Probably this year, these, well, I'm going to have some new credit cards, but those would be $100,000 credit cards. 
I want you to think about that. Um, because on my personal credit, I have a lot of um, thirty thousand dollar credit cards, but my business credit cards are the only thing that go to seventy five k. And you know, I want you to think about this: that you're literally. Let, let's just go ahead and talk about this because I'm playing a holding company game. This is this is the only reason this is possible. That this is going to be. Maybe in the future, $700,000 worth of business credit. I mean, the holding company game, once you begin to understand it, once you begin to acknowledge it, once you begin to know what it means, and it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful because when you're playing a holding company game, when you're setting up your businesses, the proper and correct way, because essentially, let's go ahead and start at the beginning. And this is being the training, and this is things I will train you to do, because I'm a I'm a technician, proof of concept. I'm a technician. I actually do this for real. First of all, you got to set up your holding company first, and. Um, one of the things that I teach people how to set up their holding company, how to set up their operating company. And then this month, and let's go ahead and talk about what's gonna happen in June and July. June and July, I'm gonna be working on the Corporate Citizen Playbook and the YouTube course. And um, probably there will probably be nothing else that's gonna pop up until August. And here's the first thing. We set up that holding company structure. Then we set up the operating company structure. Well, first we set up the holding company structure. Then we set up the holding company banking. And if you have good credit, you can get a your first holding company credit card. If you have good credit. If you don't have good credit, that's not going to happen. Then we're going to go down to the first operating account, then the operating account, checking accounts. And then we're going to get into how to start a business and how to make money. Now, there's many, many ways to start a business and there's many, many ways to make money. But one of the things that you will have to do is learn how to market your business. I have made so many mistakes in the past with marketing my business that it's it's been it's just it's, it's crazy it's just really really crazy and we're going to talk about the things you need to do because first we set up the company from a proper corporate structure that's the first thing then the second thing we do depending on what you do and this is why the corporate playbook is about to expand because we're going to be talking about you know if you have a service business where you should you advertise if you have a regular business because everyone is trying to get into the YouTube business with they're trying this is one of the things that I have seen and that has left me um, somewhat scratching my head I will say that the most that I've ever made from YouTube and this was across multiple channels was eighty three thousand dollars that's the most that I've ever made from YouTube I have made that in a week with my business. So this whole, you know, YouTube automation, setting up a YouTube channel, uh, it's possible. There are some YouTube channels that make millions of dollars. But let's 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 go ahead and talk about this. Because once again, I'm a technician. I have YouTube channels. I've had YouTube channels for 14 going on 15 years. There are 51 million YouTube channels and there's only 333,000 YouTube channels that have over 100,000 subscribers. It's not because for YouTube to be more fair or to be more open, then the number of YouTube channels that have over 100,000 should be at about 5 million. So as we go up, 
and I think there's like 25,000 YouTube channels that have over a million subscribers. And then when you get past 10 million, it goes way, way down. So what am I trying to tell you? That the number of people who are making vast sums of money using YouTube is not as many as the uh, YouTube automation marketers would have you think. It's not even close. How do I know this? Once again, I'm a technician. I used to go to YouTube video conferences and I, w and I didn't know this until I went to the conferences because once again, I was under the impression that these YouTubers were making way more money than I, I thought they were making more money than me. So I go to the YouTube conferences, I meet, sit around the, and we, we start, you know, and this is one of the things and I shout out to all of the YouTubers. YouTubers are pretty like, oh, I make this. You know, you you can ask a YouTuber how much they make, and they're like, oh, I make this, I do this. And it slowly dawned on me, because I was at the first YouTube video conference, I think it was about 2015. I was there, and I was there Thursday, I was there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I came home Saturday. By Friday, I realized that I made more money than 99% of the people who were at the conference. So the way that I'm going to go about, because I'm a, I'm a technician, I actually do this in real life. I'm going to go about and teach you the ways that I make YouTube money. Because, you know, there's direct payments from YouTube, which is AdSense. And there's payments from YouTube with your business. Uh, if I was a real estate agent, I would definitely have a YouTube channel. If I was, uh, you know, it just kind of depends upon the business. Like, I don't really know if a YouTube channel would work for an insurance agent. I'm not really sure about that. That would be one I would have to test out. But if I was a CPA, I would definitely have a YouTube channel. So, or if I was a certain type of attorney, I would definitely have a YouTube channel. Um, there, there are so many things, and this is the thing. The vast majority of businesses do not have YouTube channels, and they're leaving money on the table. They're leaving money on the table. But I'm really excited about the future because I sit down here, and I, I look at these credit cards, right? And, you know, there's nothing on that credit card. There's about... 5,000 on that credit card and there's about 600 on that credit card and there's nothing on that credit card because uh, essentially this is one of the ways that I operate. I don't really put a lot of spend on cards just out of, you know, just, just, I don't go out just spend and spend. Uh, usually there's a valid reason for the spend for me to, spend money for the business. But, you know, I'm just sitting here. At the moment, I have $500,000 in personal credit and I have $750,000 in business credit. Next year, using holding company strategies, I'm going to be able to enter into possibly $2 million that's another $1.25 million in business credit. Now, I know that I, I tend to be a cash and carry guy. And once again, because I'm, I'm a technician, as I go along these things, I've learned, like, could I pay cash for the Porsche? Yeah, I could have paid cash for the Porsche. But why didn't I? If some point in the future, because like, once again, you know, guys, I was talking about starting a moving company, right? I am so glad I did not do that in this current environment because um, I am seeing there's a mover in my office complex. And every time I go to the office, his moving trucks are at the office, always at the office, every time. And uh, I need to give him a call and just say, hey, how are things going? But in the future, and I, when I say future, maybe 2025, 2026, 
I may start a moving company, right? And because I have it on my credit report, a hundred and forty-five thousand dollar loan. That loan will ensure me that if I want to buy a moving truck on credit in the future, I now have that option. So because I'm a, I'm a technician, I'm getting smarter and smarter and smarter. Now, one of the reasons that I'm building up all of this business credit is, and you know, I'll be talking about this in the corporate citizen playbook. Like I'll, I'll tell you, like for many of you, QuickBooks has a loan. And if you run your business through QuickBooks, that may make you eligible for the QuickBooks loan. But <clears throat> the majority of you would not want it because QuickBook loans are short term loans, which means like I went ahead and I got a QuickBooks loan and I got it for $60,000, right? Based upon the information that I had residing in my QuickBooks. Guess how much my monthly payment is for this QuickBooks loan? Just take a wild guess. And one of the things that you will have to understand is with many of these business funding sources, because there's a ton of people who will offer you money. And with certain frameworks, the lending situation is going to be very short term. Uh, my QuickBooks loan went for nine months. So that means that my monthly payment is 7,200 bucks. Now, if you got a business with adequate cash flow, that might make sense. But, you know, I just took the loan out, put the money in my bank, and I'm paying them back with their own money plus a little interest. And also, when you pay that loan, I've learned that to keep the interest down. I pay my QuickBook loans early, like way early. They're due on the 26th. I may pay that loan on the 1st because this pushes the amount of interest that you have to pay down. How do I know this? Because I'm a technician. I, I actually do this in real life. And one of the things that, you know, um, like American Express is like literally throwing money at me. I've been approved for a personal loan up to $50,000 and let me go ahead and just kind of explain to you how I, I run the Amazon American Express funding protocol. Number one, I can go out and get more American Express cards because uh, I've tested this because I'm a technician. I can get six American Express cards. That's the most American Express credit cards. At one time, I had nine American Express credit cards. I had three charge cards and six credit cards. I have a feeling that I could have got seven, but once again, um, I don't like to have a lot of credit cards that I'm not using, that I'm not opening up, I'm not using. So I am not going to apply for any more American Express credit cards until my new holding company this month and next month, it will be seasoned the end of August. So I will be able to potentially get my six figure Amazon American Express credit card in September, in September. So, you know, and this is something that I will teach people, my students in the corporate citizen playbook, because once again, we're actually doing real holding company strategies and wait till we get to the marketing, which is going to come later in the year. Cause at the moment I'm currently not spending any money on marketing. So this holding company game for people who want to play, for people who want to start a business, for people who want to actually expose themselves to the world is just magnificent.
it's just magnificent because when I was in that boarding house years and years ago, you couldn't have told me that one day I would be walking around. I actually, these, 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 both these cars have $75,000 limits, right? This is $150,000 on two credit cards. You couldn't have told me that I would have been walking around with $150,000. This is, these four credit cards represent $500,000 worth of credit. $500,000. You couldn't have told me when I was in the boarding house that I would be walking. And actually, if you just count up everything I got in the wallet, I am walking around with probably, I got to think about that because I think my American Express cars have pushed me way over the boundary. But I'm walking around with probably $600,000 worth of corporate business credit in my credit card, in my wallet right now. And uh, a little cash, just a little cash, 900 bucks in cash. So for those who want to play the corporate game, for the folks who want to enjoy, because, you know, this is one of the reasons, like I said, I'm doing things a little differently <clears throat> and I've had one holding company. Now I'm up to three. I had two and I will explain in the corporate citizen playbooks why I have this third holding company. And also, uh, let me go ahead and share some things with you in the future. If you go to the Google machine and put your name in and put your address, there's a very good chance that they will have your exact address. And the next time I move, you will not be able to go to the Google machine to know where I live. You will not be able to do this because I, there's something called public records. And this is something with the credit cards because I've figured some stuff out. So next time I move, I am not going to have my credit cards come to my house. They're not coming to my house and I'm actually getting ready to send my credit cards to my office address. Uh, I got to set that up. So I'm going to have all of my credit cards going to my corporate address. I'm going to have my corporate cards going to my corporate address and my personal credit cards going to my corporate address. And then I'm going to have my car insurance. I got to talk to my insurance agent about that because when you put use credit cards, credit cards go into Experian, uh, TransUnion, and Equifax, right? Plus, they also go into something that's called public record. So this is one of the ways that your address is on Google. So once again, next time I move, and also, I'm not having any utilities in my name. The utilities will be, because uh, let me just go ahead and explain to you. I'm going to set up a brand new corporation that's going to be part of my brand new holding company. And that corporation is going to have the utilities. It's going to have the electricity. It's going to have the gas. It's going to have the cable, all of that stuff. And it's going to have the internet. All that stuff is going to be corporate. Um, now that I have set up my corporate corporate situation, it's going to be really, really, really different in the future because I'm out here in real life. I'm doing this for real. And um, also there's something else I'm getting ready to do. And uh, I'll share this with you. I'm getting ready to move to Florida. I have family in Florida and my family member is gonna let me live down there. And I'm gonna split my time between Florida and here. And when I move to Florida, guess what? Florida is going to become my permanent residence. Why? No income, no state income tax. So 
that's going to be the thing because essentially I have to have some residency in Florida. So that's going to happen. So I'm getting, I'm getting rid of the Georgia state income tax. And this is going to happen really, really soon because the next time I pay myself in my, out of my company, it's going to be from that Florida address. So we're getting like, once again, there, there's so many things you can do. There's so many things you can set up. There's so many things you can do. And for those of you who want that setup, who want that knowledge, this is the thing you need to do. You need to start learning these business lessons because I was breezing TikTok and the number of people who think that you can go out and get a, an, an LLC, an EIN, and a corporate checking account, and that these companies are going to literally be throwing hundreds of thousand dollars worth of business credit. I literally saw something that I was like, there ain't no way that's going to work. How do I know? Because I'm a technician. I actually do this in real life. And I'm like, and the, it, it's, I'm going to say it. It's the slower social economic people who come up with these grand ideals of these corporations are going like QuickBooks. You know why QuickBooks gave me a $60,000 loan? Because they could see my money going through the account. I only hooked up one bank account. I could have got more money out of them. And this is another thing you have to understand with corporate funding. Once you fund something, once you get corporate funding, this just opens up the door for you to get more corporate funding. Uh, I had, when I was doing the uh, eBay thing, which I stopped, that opened up the door to me of funding for a business that wasn't making money because I could, I had the bank accounts. So when you do this, cause like I said, next year, I'm going to probably be, well, yeah, I'm probably going to be $2 million in business credit and with the credit cards, but more importantly, I'll be a business credit with the lines of credit. Because um, once again, uh, this new corporation, this new uh, holding company I have, I will have filed taxes for this new corporation. And that's going to open up the door for me to get a lot of money. It's going to open up the door um, for me to do a lot of things. And once again, the, the training, the training that we're getting ready to do the rest of these years is just going to be bananas. It's just going to be bananas. So if you want to make money, go ahead and get in that new corporate training. My name is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you guys in the next video.